What is happening everyone? I am very excited to share a fabulous tutorial in which uh, I created this analog clock in React. And you must be asking why, why an analog clock? Uh, it was just to practice a couple of uh, concepts like uh, for example state and then the uh, use context. I'll show you guys. So it's a pretty good example how you can do that to share um, those information between different components so for example the second one is ticking and when it has done 360 degrees then it will emit um, you know a signal telling the minute handle to turn by that many degrees and when the minute uh, handle has turned 360 degrees then it will emit its signal to turn to tell the hour handle hey you turn by that many degrees so I think it was pretty cool um, I really enjoyed it so let me walk you guys through on how I did it all right, so here we are looking at the project structure. The only dependencies I have is the style components, and then here are the rest of the components. I broke them down into its individual, well, I guess parts. So you have the app. Uh, the app is actually just uh, storing the clock. And we're using uh, SVG, so that's why I'm having a view box and a container, which I've done in my previous tutorial, so you guys can take a look at that. So now let's jump into the components and in my components I have this clock component and the clock component is actually holding on uh, the different parts so the hour handle the minute handle the second and the frame which is this circle right here well before uh, we look into that let's look at this one hook that I'm using and this is nothing but just a tick hook and the, the main purpose of this is just uh, for others to use it consume it I guess and to see how many seconds have elapsed Pretty straightforward uh, and then let's start looking at these different uh, components now so what we have here is the frame which is the most simple one it's just two circles you have an outer circle and then an inner circle that's all we have let's look at the markings so the markings you must be seeing that we have uh, these different markings at different angles and the way I did it is you know just using some math so let's look at the math first and then we can come back here because it will make more sense all right, so if you look at an analog clock, what we have is a circle uh, with some radius R, which is right here. And then uh, what we have is we can break it down into an X and Y components. So all we're trying to do is a, for a certain angle, we're trying to find these X and Y coordinates because that's how we move this handle for the three, um, I guess, components. So we know the angle. Uh, we know the X and Y components and then we can use trigonometry to find the X and Y coordinates. So I know that, for example, there's a 360 degrees in a circle. And then if uh, you have, let's say, 60 seconds or 60 minutes, so you take 360 divided by 60 and you will get that many degrees you have to turn. So for each second or for each minute, you turn that many degrees. So now let's uh, jump back into code and see how we use this. So here I am um, going just through four angles because you have four quadrants. So you just do one and then the others are just mirror images. That's exactly what I'm doing. So what I do is I say take the radius times it by met.cosine will give me the x component. Now the met.cosine takes angles in uh, degrees so we need to convert it to radians which is why I'm multiplying by the met.pi over 180. So I'll, I'll do that. And then here, as I said, there are four quadrants. So what I'm doing is just taking like the first quadrant, then just flipping one of the component. And that's how I get the mirror image of the other with very little work. And then these markings are the same story. I'm just going and saying, you know, at this radius, at that many offset, uh, put these uh, different markers. And then here uh, I'm passing in the degrees because these degrees are then used to rotate these small markers at this angle. So take a look at the code. If you don't understand it, uh, just let me know. And then just by applying some transformation, um, the, the translate and rotate, we're able to rotate these in a nice circle. Uh, stays pretty consistent. So now let's look at the hour, um, I guess, uh, dial. So what we have is the emitter, which I'll talk about. And then we have a state where we keep uh, track of the hour. And then we just have a, you know, uh, just a dial. And then I should have called it handle actually. And um, what I do is just pretty much at this center, at that 
um, x and y coordinates. Uh, I'm just drawing the the handle and the angle is what is used to rotate this. And that angle then is used to apply the transformation. And I'm only doing rotation z. And now this is very important, the transform origin. Because for SVGs, what happens is if you don't do this, they are actually set to 0, 0. So let me do that. That's what they're set to. And that just destroys everything. The thing is somewhere in the air. So what you have to do is you need to set this to center so that we can center it by uh, its origin. So that's very important. Now the same goes for the minute, the same goes for the second. So now let's look at how they share the data between each other. So we have this emitter which is using a reducer. You can use this in any project where you are sharing data or um, this kind of doing signal thing. So what I have here is an initial state where I initialize it to some uh, you know uh, time or hours. And then what I do is I use the reducer. So every time the seconds um, the handle reaches 360, it's going to emit a seconds. Um, you know, I, for I guess a lack of better terms, I just call it seconds. So if I go here to second, as you can see, when we reach 354, then we dispatch a seconds signal. Now, why is it 354? Well, because the second handle moves every six degrees. So six degrees, it, it turns like that. So actually, I want to do it one less than that because we start at zero. So that's how this works. And the same goes for minutes. When we reach 360 degrees, we uh, dispatch a minutes um, signal. Now the minutes handle uh, rotates every 30 degrees. And then the same goes for the hour, which is right here. Now the hour doesn't have to emit anything because um, you know we're done. But you could use this to say trigger an alarm or something, um, which can be an extra task if you want to do it. So now back here, um, this is our reducer. So what we do is we get two things from it, a state, which is the current state, and a dispatch that can be used by whoever wants to dispatch a signal. And then it's just a, a context we use. And in that context, we provide the value. Then if I look at my clock, I wrap that whole thing in my emitter. And then that's how everyone gets your, you know, access to it. So I hope you guys like this video. If you guys want more uh, tutorials on uh, other React or any other thing, just let me know. Shoot me a line. And uh, that will be it for now.